So a natural place to start with this is in the course model. So there are really four parts to MP2. There is the data that we're going to display. There's support in the server for providing that data to the client. There's support in the client for retrieving that data. So we have a network connection here. There's an exchange of information over a network between the client, which is the app, and the server, which provides the information. And then we have support in the client for rendering that data, meaning displaying it to the user. But this all starts with this course model. Um, the, for each part of MP2, there is sort of reference code and then there is the new code that you're expected to write. And there isn't necessarily that much new code that you need to uh, create in order to finish this checkpoint, but you do need to be guided by the existing code. Okay, so for the course model, your reference code is the summary model. So spend some time with this, review it a little bit, um, and this will be a great guide for the things that you need to add to uh, course.job. Okay, so, um, and there's some things in here that, that are kind of important to, uh, to review, right? Um, so, you know, so certain, you know, pieces of um, this that are required for, for Jackson. So we're actually using Jackson to deserialize this JSON information. Now you might wonder, where is the JSON coming from? So let's look, let me show you that. So uh, when we created summaries, we use this, um, this uh, file, the server uses this file called 2021 underscore spring underscore summary dot JSON. This is drawn from the official course catalog and it's the summary information, so year, semester, department number, and title for all the courses in the CS department. Now, the course catalog actually has a lot more information about courses. This was just the information that you used to render that activity display where you showed, you know, the name of each activity in a list. Sorry, the name of each course in a list. Here in the 2021 underscore spring underscore dot JSON, these are full JSON objects for all of the courses in the CS department. And there is a lot of information in these, okay? So one thing I want to make sure that you understand is that you don't have to make your course model model all of this information. If you did, that would take you a long time. There is only one thing that we are testing in course.java, and there's only one thing that you need to add in order to finish the project. So don't spend time adding stuff to model the credit hours and you know the section number and the part of term and stuff like this. I mean, you might notice that there is all this information here, and this is information that's provided by an official university API. So there's actually existing applications, like when you go to Course Explorer, Course Explorer takes this data and essentially renders it into a nice web format. And on some level, you're doing the same thing in an Android app. Right? You're using the same data, you're just rendering it differently in a different uh, type of application. So this is where the data comes from. Now again, in order to finish course.java, there's not necessarily a lot that you have to do. Go back and review the previous video about how we set up the test suites to get them to compile. And you know you might have noticed the test suites are only really depending on this one particular field in the course model. And your job is to just make sure that when you create a course model, this field gets set properly uh, based on the data that's in the JSON. And that's what the test suites are going to check. So if I go back and I run my MP2 test, um, run this, it's gonna take a minute, you'll see that it fails because it's expecting the course model to have a particular field set for description and it's finding an empty string, right? So you'll see it says, you know, expected program security, trusted base, this is information for a uh, course on computer security in our department, and it found an empty string. And that's because my get description method actually doesn't you know, um, store a description, it just returns an empty string. Now, again, the reference code for this is in uh, summary.java. So look at summary.java. Um, there's a few things here that you might uh, want to know, right? There is an empty summary constructor, and that's important for Jackson to work properly. There's also a summary constructor that sets all the fields. Um, and then there are these getters and private fields for each piece of information that's required. So if you take this as your model, you will not have to do very much to finish course.java. There's not a lot of code to write. If you find yourself writing a lot of code to complete course.java, please pause and get some help because you're, you're headed off in the wrong direction.
Uh, this is a pretty simple, straightforward set of changes that should not take you that long. Um, when you're done, and this part of the test suite is complete, that's when you move on. So particularly for this MP, it's pretty important that you work incrementally. So get you know, your course model finished, get it working, make sure it passes the test suites, and then come back and review the rest of the videos in order to get a sense of how to proceed uh, through the remaining parts of the MP.